Hey algebra students, let's talk numbers. Let's talk the natural numbers, okay? Natural numbers, we abbreviate that with the, uh, the letter N, and these are numbers that you can do things like, you can, well, you can count with them, you can add them uh, like that, you can subtract them like that. Uh, there's one thing you can't do though, and you can't do a subtraction problem where you take the number from itself, because we're lacking a certain number there. So in order to do that, we have to expand our idea of number to include that one, zero. So now we have a set of the whole numbers. And what can we do with the whole numbers? Well, again, we can do addition problems, we can do subtraction problems. Again, this time we can use zero in our addition and subtraction problems. And we can, no, we can't do that, okay? You can't do a subtraction problem where you take a smaller number minus a bigger number. No, no. So what do we have to do? Again, we have to expand our idea of what a number is, and this time we're going to include uh, negative numbers. So now we have this set here, a set we call the integers. And we use the letter Z to, to uh, uh, um, abbreviate the integers, not because the letter Z stands for integers, uh, it's because the word Zahlen in German, which means to count, or integers, starts with the letter Z, okay? So now we have the integers, and we can add integers together, we can subtract integers together, including smaller number minus bigger number to get uh, negative number. We can multiply our integers, positive times negative gives us a negative answer. We can uh, divide our integers. Uh, we, can, we can't do that one though, okay? Because this time we're trying to do 11 divided by two, and two doesn't go evenly to 11. So again, in order to do this, we're gonna have to expand our idea of what a number is. We're gonna try to find a number that's somewhere in here, somewhere between five and six, because 10 divided by two is five, and 12 divided by two is six. So in order to do that, we have to fill in all the gaps in between these numbers here. And when we fill in all the gaps between these numbers, we come up with the number five and a half. We can write it as a fraction or mixed number, or we can write it as a decimal if we wish, 5.5. .5. We can even write it as a percentage if we want to, 550%. It's all the same number. You can just write it in different ways. So, uh, now, what are these numbers called? These numbers are called the rational numbers, okay? Rational numbers are, are well, they're abbreviated by the letter Q, and again, you're thinking rational doesn't start with the letter Q. I uh, know, but the word quotient does start with the letter Q, and every rational number is a quotient. It's a number divided by another number. It's in, in particular, it's an integer divided by another integer except zero, okay? Can't divide by zero. So now, now we can do lots of things, okay, with these, uh, with these uh, uh, rational numbers. We can multiply rational numbers by each other. We can divide rational numbers by each other. And when we divide them, we can write it as a mixed number or perhaps as a decimal. This one's a repeating decimal. Uh, we can take the square roots of numbers. Uh, square root of 6.25 gives us 2.5. We, uh, we can measure things. And uh, we find when we're measuring things, we start running into some problems because this right triangle right here, if this side is one and this side is one, then this side is the square root of two, and try as we might, you can't find a rational number that is exactly the square root of two. So there's a problem. And then when we look at this circle, we come, uh, we come up with another problem. If you try to divide the circumference by the, the distance across the diameter, again, you come up with a number that cannot be nailed down by a rational number. So what are these numbers? Well, we know what these numbers are now, okay? These numbers are the square root of two, which is approximately 1.414421, and pi, which is approximately 3.14159. And so it's right around there, and it's right around there, but it's not exactly a rational number. So what we have to do again is expand our idea of what a number is. And so we expand our idea into the real numbers, okay? So the real numbers are every single number that you can find on this number line, okay? It's the integers, it's the, uh, it's the numbers in between the integers, the rational numbers when you divide one integer by another, it's the numbers in between the integers that can't be exactly uh, quantified by a, a, a division problem. Uh, in, the, in other words, the irrational numbers. And so when you, when you combine the rational numbers and the irrational numbers together, you get the real numbers, okay? So, in summary, we started with the natural numbers, we added zero to get the whole numbers, 
then we added uh, uh, the negative numbers to get the integers, then we added uh, every single possible ratio of integers, uh, every single possible fraction of integers to get the rational numbers, then we added even more uh, uh, irrational numbers to get real numbers. So now we can do pretty much anything we want to. There's two main things that we can't do uh, with real numbers. You still can't divide by zero, and you still can't take the square root of a negative number, because think about that for a second. Okay, take negative numbers. If you take a negative number and you square it, you get a positive number. If you take a positive number and square it, you also get a positive number. If you take zero and square it, you get zero. So there's no type of number that you can square and get a negative number. No type of real number that you can square and get a negative number. So in order to come up with the idea of the square root of negative one, what we have to do is we have to, again, expand our idea of what a number is. And so we do that, and we call that number i, okay? i is an imaginary number. As a matter of fact, it's the imaginary unit. And so if i is the square root of negative one, then we can start, we can start taking the square root of other numbers, like the square root of negative nine would be three times i. And the square root of uh, negative 121 would be 11 times i, because 11 times 11 is 121, and i times i is negative 1. And the square root of negative 2 would be, well, the square root of 2, that's an irrational number, times i. So we have our real numbers, we have our imaginary numbers, which you're probably thinking are kind of weird, and they are, but you'll get used to them. So the real numbers and the imaginary numbers, and if you add a real number and an imaginary number together, you get a complex number, a plus b i. Now, complex numbers include all of the real numbers. All you have to do is just make this, this a zero. Complex numbers also include all of the imaginary numbers, okay? All you have to do is make that part zero. And complex numbers also include all of the sums, all of the, all possible uh, 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 addition problems, so sums of real and imaginary numbers. So those are the complex numbers. We're going to be talking some more about complex numbers, but that's in a later video. For now, bye-bye.